Good afternoon. Welcome back. We do have a couple birthdays that we're going to mention, but we will have a small sat review as I don't have cards of these folks, but I did want to recognize them as we've been trying to recognize folks on a daily basis. Uh, born on this date in 2020, of course, today is February 2nd, 2023. Make sure we get that out of the way. But born on this date in the year 2000, uh, current truck series driver Lawless Allen. Of course, Lawless drove for, um, now I drew a blank, a 45, he, um, Nice Motorsports. Sorry about that. I had to look that up real quick. Um, but he did drive for Nice Motorsports this last year. Had a pretty rough year, actually. And then a couple other birthdays. Let's see here, Alex Kennedy, uh, he's raced a few races here and there along the way. A former owner-driver who got in trouble with the law many years ago, Billy Harvey. I don't know if you know that name, but you go back in the early 80s, he dominated some ARCA races, ran a few cup races, and had some run-ins with the law. Uh, also, Billy Boat, his son, had a birthday the other day. Well, Billy is celebrating one today, as is former drag racing champion, Ed the Ace McCalla. And one other birthday. I would have a card of this guy. Um, it's somewhere in my stacks and stacks of cards of 1992 Max. But Ronnie Revis, he's on the All Pro card. And the name Ronnie Revis, if that sounds familiar, he is of BNR Engines from back in the day with Hendrick Motorsports. So uh, happy birthday to all those folks as they celebrate another year. The set we're going to review. Um, 1994 High Tech Brickyard 400 Top 10 Finishers of the Race. Uh, 1994 High Tech was a, it was a, some odd number, like a 110 card set, reviewing the Brickyard from 1994. It's kind of a cool set. There were many different backgrounds of this. Uh, my personal favorite is the one that has the gasoline alley or the car behind them. There's, there's triangles, there's like snowflakes, there's this whatever this is but there are several different variations of background uh, you have the brickyard 400 winner logo right there so jeff gordon of course the first winner of the first brickyard 400 and i'll show you the fronts and backs of these um, we were there that day me my dad my brother a few of our friends about eight of us went i mean there's like 300 and some odd thousand people it was a ridiculous crowd Brett Bedine was there. Of course, him and his brother got into a little fiasco on track. But there's that. Now, I think this is kind of funny. Bill Elliott finished third in that race, but they did not have the rights to use Bill's name, image, or any of that. They could still use the car because Bill didn't own the car. And if you see, they've uh, airbrushed the uh, his name off of the roof. As well as uh, he had a barbecue sauce out at the time, Bill Elliott barbecue sauce, and it uh, was also airbrushed off of there. But you can see that, and it just says Budweiser Ford. Does it? And there's some other cards in this set that just says the Budweiser Ford driver, blah blah blah. Rusty Wallace finished fourth that day. Highs finishing Pontiac. No, he was in a Ford that day. I'm sorry, he was in a Pontiac in '93, but they didn't run the Brickyard then. But the weather was perfect this day. We got to the uh, what was called the Coke lot at about 6 in the morning. And cooked breakfast. Had a great day. Me and a couple buddies of mine that we went. We walked the entire Souvenir Row, which was um, not quite a mile long. And it was packed full of souvenirs. Spent quite a bit of money that day. Had a really good time. Dale Earnhardt, outside pole sitter for the Brickyard. Tried his darndest to lead lap one and brush the wall coming out of turn four. Of course, pole sitter Rick Mast did lead the first lap. Darrell Waltrip was sixth. He had a quiet run that day. A lot of drivers had really quiet runs. Pretty much the drivers that made the most noise, Jeff and Brett Bodine and Jeff Gordon. Those were really the only drivers that had strong performances that day. Ken Schrader. He had a strong seventh place finish. Michael Waltrip driving the Bahari Pennzoil Pontiac. He also had a strong run.
Todd Bodine driving for Raymock. I believe by this time it was Butchmock Motorsports. And for a long time, I always wondered what Factory Stores of America was. Uh, if you've ever seen the, the tang Tanger or Tanger outlet malls at places like um, down in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, or Branson, Missouri, or some of these other tourist attractions, that's kind of what a Factory Stores of America was. It was just an outlet mall that had all your discount stores for all your name brand companies and, and so forth. But the name Factory Stores doesn't exist anymore to my knowledge. I haven't seen one around in many, many years. And then our 10th place finisher for the inaugural Brickyard 400, Mr. Morgan Shepard. 1995, I believe, uh, would be Morgan's, or 95 or 96. 96 was Morgan's last career, uh, second to last career top five finish. He did have one last top five finish at Atlanta in 1997, but uh, the Brickyard in 95 was uh, more, or 96 was Morgan's only top five, if I'm remembering that race correctly as well. But the 94 Brickyard, this is the high tech top 10 set, so it would be the again the top 10 finishers in the inaugural Brickyard 400. That was really, really good race. I would personally like to see the race back on the oval, as the road course has been nothing shy of a glorified demolition derby both years, or at least this last two years. Um, I think if they really wanted to make the racing at Indy really, really good, make it like it was prior to 1993 where you didn't have the pit access lanes, you had the apron, people could race on the apron, you could make passes, um, but then it makes it like Homestead was, where people would dive below and they'd lose control. So, you know, you just never know. It, it, it's a historic facility, but like any facility, once you get the speeds up so high, you take away the driver's ability to maneuver, and then that's when it becomes single file. But... You know, I, I'd love to see it back on the oval. I always thought that the racing was fairly good. The tire fiasco in 2008 is always going to have that stain on it, and they're going to have trouble getting away from that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the videos. Like I said, once again, happy birthday to the folks that we mentioned at the top. Hope you like this set. I don't know if I've showed this set before, but uh, got a lot of new viewers. Maybe they haven't been through the archives to see if we have or not. But uh, kind of a neat little set. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow.